explains Ghana's unflattering status as a rising importer of food in the past decade or so. The staggering annual food import bill of over $2 billion is totally unacceptable and is all the more reason why government is on a serious mission to revolutionize Ghana's agriculture right through the value chain from production to consumption. 17 and 4.8% in 2018, and is expected to rise to 6.9% uh, in 2019. The target is to reach 10% annual growth from 2023 onwards. Interventions under the Planting for Food and Jobs program have been designed to achieve the following. Improve yields of farmers through access to subsidized, improved seeds and fertilizers, reduce post-harvest losses, increase extension services to farmers, the development of a livestock sector, subsector, selected tree crop development, introduction of greenhouse technology to improve productivity and quality of vegetable production, improvement in mechanization services to farmers and irrigation development. To achieve these objectives, ladies and gentlemen, Planting for Food and Jobs is organized into five modules. And these are the full security module, which has now captured the headline Planting for Food and Jobs, Planting for Export and Rural Development, Rearing for Food and Jobs, the Greenhouse Villages and Mechanization Centers for Farmers. Thus far, the government is on course to de delivering on all these targets. And let me share some information to, to buttress this point. Food security module. Available statistics on yields of selected food crops in 2018 compared to 2016 indicate increases in maize by 89% from 1.8 metric tons per hectare to 3.4 metric tons per hectare, 48% for rise from 2.7 metric tons per hectare to 4.0 metric tons per hectare, and two, over 200% for soya, from one hectare, one metric ton per hectare to 3.1 metric tons per hectare. The, this achievement was a direct result of the provision of subsidized fertilizers and certified improved seeds. In Ghana, we are subsidizing retail price to the farmer to the tune of 50%. Never happened in West Africa before, and by far the highest in the region. Most countries in West Africa do not provide subsidies of these inputs to their farmers. To date, over 700,000 metric tons of subsidized fertilizers have been distributed to 1.1 million farmers registered under the full security model of PFJ. The farmers have also been provided with quality certified seeds, totaling 26,000 metric tons in the three years of the implementation. And I hasten to add that in 2020, three years, we did 26,000 seeds to farmers. This year alone, 2020, we are targeting another 26,000 metric tons of seed. That's how accelerated the program is to ensure that improved seed, which is the essence of modern technology, reaches our farmers. And I'm talking about farmers, I'm talking about farmers, smallholders, operating no more than two, three hectares at the most. And these happen to be the poorest group of workers in Ghana. So socially, it's also very inclusive to ensure that everybody benefits from this uh, boom in production. When it comes to livestock, there is a pilot at this stage. The livestock module seeks to attract particularly the youth and women into livestock entrepreneurship. And ultimately, 
and show self-sufficiency in meat production. Livestock covered under this module are sheep, goats, pigs, cattle, and poultry. By far the most important economically is the poultry industry. We, imp we import close to 200 million US dollars of poultry meat every year into Ghana. This must stop. So a massive program is underway to revamp the poultry industry. I don't want to bore you with the details, but it's coming on very, very strong, I can assure you. The other module which is of interest to investors is what we call the tree crop module. Under the banner Planting for Export and Rural Development, the Ministry of Agriculture is working closely with the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development through the district chief executive who will represent the president at the district level to ensure that certified seeds of six select, seven selected crops are given out free of charge to farmers. And that scheme is, working, is really working like magic. The seven tree crops are cashew, coffee, oil palm, rubber, coconut, mango, and shea nut. The district chief executives have been given responsibility to establish seed gardens and produce seedlings for distribution to farmers all over the country, free of charge. The target is to plant enough seedlings of these selected crops over a period of between six and seven years to produce exports worth at least $2 billion per year for each of these crops. In other words, the aim is to generate up to $14 billion a year compared to only $2 billion which COCO gives us today. Government has so far distributed 15 million certified seedlings of the selected crops to nearly 80,000 farmers across the country. Representatives of all the research organizations responsible for these selected crops have been constituted into an advisory committee in my office to evaluate and expand, to evaluate an expansion program of their institutions to supply the needed planting material. A budget of some 40 million US dollars have been drawn up to expand the activities of these institutions to produce the needed quantities of planting material. I must say that this program is very, very popular and is changing the whole structure of agriculture in Ghana. In the northern sector, which is Savannah, there's no cash crop, uh, tree crop. So for the first time in the history of this country, cashew and shea are being distributed to farmers across the northern sector. And farmers are very keen, they are queuing in front of the offices of the district chief executives looking for these seedlings to plant. And once we supply them enough of what they need, I'm sure that it's going to change the face of agriculture in the north. It will not only be food dependent agriculture in the northern savannah, which has most of our uh, uh, lands which are not uh, cultivated, but also for the first time give them cash crop, cash into their pockets in addition to the productivity gains in the food crops that we are working with them. The other modules to do with farm mechanization, the volumes of yields that are coming out of planting for food and jobs as very unprecedented in the lives of our farmers, where they used to do harvest two, three bags of maize with their traditional seed. Some are doing as much as 40 bags of 50 kilograms, and I've seen it myself. So we cannot rely on labor alone to, to do it. We have to very quickly move into mechanization, not only in the agro-processing, but also in some of our farming activities like harvesting and so on. And we are working on that. Farm machinery worth $33 million were imported from Brazil 
last year. And we are working with the Brazilian government to supply another $33 million worth of farm machinery for supply in 2020. The Indian Exim Bank facility of $150 million is almost on stream now. And we intend to utilize this money to bring in farm and agro processing machinery to support what is going on in the field. These machineries are available to farmers at 40% subsidy to farm association, farmers associations, to the private sector, selected district assemblies for the establishment of the agricultural mechanization centers across the country. We expect a substantial expansion in the establishment of armed sex in 2020 through the distribution, the disbursement of a large tranche of $33 million loan from Brazil and $150 million facility from the Exim Bank of India. There's another very interesting component, which is to do with greenhouses, technology for horticultural development. Government is promoting the production of high value horticultural crops, mainly vegetables using greenhouse technology. Three greenhouse villages have been established at Dawinya and Bojiasi in the south and in Akumadan in the middle of the country under this module of planting for food and jobs. The prime target of this intervention is the youth and women. So far, two of the greenhouse villages at Dawinya and Akumadan have provided training to over 250 agricultural graduates and diplomats. Under an arrangement with the Israeli government, with the objective, uh, some trainees undergo 11-month paid work on kibbutz in Israel with the objective of gaining hands-on experience. The idea is to set up their own greenhouses in the villages that we have established, we have developed, on return to Ghana with government support. The pioneers of 50 have just returned to Ghana, and the sec second batch of 70 Ghanaian graduates have begun work in Israel, as I speak to you. The introduction of greenhouse villages holds great prospects for the country, given the modernized production system with cutting edge technology. Irrigation, as you may be aware, the president cut the sword in November 2019 at Fualogu in the north to begin construction of a dam and a 25,000 hectare irrigation project. Government has surely made some strides in the construction and rehabilitation of dams and dugouts throughout the country. This is to ensure all year crop production to guarantee increased farmer income through increased output. A total of 65,000 hectares of irrigable land has been earmarked for completion under the ongoing projects at Pound Left Bank, Tono, Pro, um, Promem, and the others. In addition, close to 100 hectares of land have been put under irrigation using surface water abstraction technology and solar water pumps. 200 boreholes with mounted solar pumps to harness groundwater for crop production are also being constructed in various parts of the country. Marketing arrangements are very, very important. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you find yourself suddenly swamped with huge surpluses of produce. So in addition to these interventions mentioned above, government has also introduced a number of far-reaching measures aimed at promoting agricultural marketing. These include the construction of 80 warehouses of 1,000 metric ton capacity each to increase the national warehousing capacity to help address the perennial issue of post-harvest losses. Aligned to this is the establishment of the Ghana Commodity Exchange, and I'm glad to see the boss here with us on the panel, and he's going to speak about that. Uh, and the revamping and support for the National Buffer Stock Company. The, together, these institutions help provide prompt access to markets, a major factor and determinant for sustaining production and interest in agriculture. At this last meeting, Parliament of Ghana passed a Tree Crop Development Authority bill. which establishes the marketing institution to promote development of the seven selected tree crops that I have mentioned. It will be equivalent to 
Coco and Coco Marketing, Coco Board of Ghana. But in this case, all the seven are under this authority uh, to help to sustain the development that we have embarked on. Swift interventions of two institutions, the Ghana Commodity Exchange and NAFCO, following the recent reported case of excess rice production in Upper East Region, speaks of government's readiness to, to act promptly to assist farmers. I'm happy to note that through the coordination of the activities of stakeholders, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture has put in place measures to avert losses to farmers and processors. The government of Ghana, under the able leadership of His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Kufuado, who just left uh, these premises a few minutes ago, has imported milling machinery for rice, maize, and soya from China, Brazil, and also from uh, India, with the facilities that I've mentioned, which are expected to arrive by the middle of this year. This will surely provide appreciable relief to farmers and boost grain industry. I must hasten to add that the success of government's effort at ensuring self-sufficiency in rice and poultry production depends largely on the level of local consumption. The appeals by the president to the nation to eat what we grow to motivate our farmers and support development of local food industry has been well received by Ghanaians, as you heard from the previous uh, panel. Ladies and gentlemen, the comprehensive account that I have given this morning clearly shows the determined commitment of the government of Ghana to develop the bedrock of the economy, that's the agricultural sector. The success achieved so far in the last three years of the administration has received worldwide acclamation. The, these runaway successes have opened up vast, unprecedented opportunities for both local and foreign investment in the agricultural sector in Ghana, both on farm and the value chain of the sector. Ghana is ready for business in agriculture, and you are all invited to the table. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much.